Welcome to this episode of the AEC Engineering and Technology Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping engineering professionals find technology that fits their needs. In this episode, I'll be flying solo and I'll be talking to you about how to run a successful software pilot at your firm. Okay, let's jump into today's episode. Okay, so for today's conversation, we're going to talk about how to run a successful software pilot at your firm. But first, let's begin by talking about what a software pilot is exactly. Software pilot is essentially an extended trial of, of a piece of software. And instead of just getting engagement from, let's say, one or two users throughout the company, you're trying to get um, essentially a a pilot group or a test group to put kind of put the software through the ringer and see how it performs in the context of your business. Now we know in civil engineering firms, there's a lot more than just office work, right? So there's going to be some extended amount of time where it's tested both in the office and in the field to see if it meets the needs of your business. So now that we understand what a software pilot is, I think the first thing you're going to want to consider in, in and over the course of the software pilot is the key stakeholders in your firm. So I actually like to break this down into three three types, the first being leadership. So these are the people, whether they be leaders in, in your civil engineering firm who have the experience, have kind of seen how the business runs and know how all the, the engineering and processes work, or the financial leaders, right? Perhaps your CFO or whoever is in charge of, of spending the dollars, perhaps a vice president, right? We're talking about that level of, of individual and influence in your firm. So these people tend not to be day-to-day -day users of the software, but they are the ones who understand how the firm runs and, and kind of what makes it tick, right? So you're going to want to understand what these individuals are looking for. Um, it could be, say, like a return on investment, or it could be some other metric, right? But just getting them involved early and understanding what they're looking for is critical. And then let's say a level below them, let's say mid or senior level level influencers, right? These are the these are the people who they'll end up using the output of the software. They may not be using it uh, day to day or um, on an extended basis, right? But they care about what is the software doing for me, and then how is it making my life and the people, the lives of the people underneath me that I manage better, right? And they're also going to be somewhat of a um, an influencer or a trusted advisor to the, the leadership group earlier that we talked about, right? So getting their buy-in is critical because they're the direct link up the chain to the, the individuals who ultimately make the decisions. And the third group I'll talk about are the actual end users. They're getting into the nitty gritty, right? In your civil engineering firm, they may be the individuals doing the design work, the field work, investigations, et cetera. They're actually going to be the ones using the software day to day. So you're going to want to get them involved because if they're not able to use the software, they don't understand how it works, right? It's just not going to be used and the pilot project will not be a success, right? And now that we've talked about the who, well, let's talk a little bit about the what, the criteria for success. So there needs to be a pre-established picture or list of criteria that can clearly define what success looks like for your civil engineering firm. So this could be a return on investment, right? There could be some, some number or some percentage of time or dollar saved that your firm is looking at, or it could just be, hey, we, we just need a qualitative measure of, did it make the lives of our people easier and allow them to work on high value tasks? But whatever that whatever that, let's say, criteria is, it just needs to be clearly defined so that the the people involved in the process understand what metrics are being used to determine whether or not the software pilots a success, right? And speaking of money, you know, everything we do has a cost associated with um, dollars or time, which the third, the third topic I'd like to talk about is setting a budget for the pilot. So with any piece of software, there's a number of costs involved. One of the more obvious costs is the cost of the licensing fees to actually use the software, right? That's pretty much a given. However, there's more to it, right? There's going to be the equipment that goes into using the software, right? It could be a camera, it could be a scanner. Um, it just depends on what you're piloting, right? So you have to account for those physical equipment costs. There's the training and education that goes along with the end users, 
to say, hey, you know, this is the software, right? This is the time you need to spend away from project work to get onboarded with it. You need to understand what those those hours look like, that time and that cost looks like to actually get the people onboarded to, to use the software. There's, of course, the internal meetings, right, with all the stakeholders we just discussed earlier, um, talking about, hey, are our success criteria being met? What's the next step in the pilot, right? So having a good idea of, of kind of what's needed internally as well as externally, right? Time spent on, on the phone with the software vendor trying to identify potential problems different use cases like, hey, you know, have you seen another firm use it in a different way that's kind of similar to our use case? Or, oh, you know, I had this issue, right? We had a group of two or three people who were using it in the field and had this issue. So those are going to come up and you just need to be able to budget for that time spent. And, you know, you're not going to be able to predict every single hour or every single task kind of down to, let's say, a very precise measurement, right? But the idea here is to capture the major the major, um, let's say, costs involved, whether it be in time or dollars with running a pilot. So there's a pretty clear upfront expectation about what it's going to cost your firm, which then again, helps keep decision makers informed and gives your software pilot a better chance of succeeding. Right now, we actually talked just about getting the software vendor engaged, right? In that instance, I gave, hey, you know, there's a, there's a problem or a use case, but, um, getting the software vendor engaged early and often is huge. These people who are, are helping you along the journey and along the pilot are the experts, right? They know the software inside and out. They've got tons of use cases from different customers, some which may be relevant to what you do and some that may not be, right? We talked about troubleshooting. We talked about customer service. Um, you may not have all of the resources in your firm and it's probably not realistic to expect that to be possible, but with the help of a software vendor, you can actually get more, get more from the customer service side and help your users run a more successful pilot, right? So getting them engaged early and often is important because you can't do it all by yourself. You're going to need a helping hand along the way. And that's what the customer success department of a lot of, of software companies is, is, is there for, right? To make sure their customers are succeeding. And of course, a pilot is no different. And the final tip I'll talk about um, as it relates to running a successful pilot in your civil engineering firm is setting and enforcing a deadline. So it's easy to get caught up with project work and, and the amount of demands that, that can come across um, your lap as a civil engineer, right? But if you are able to set a deadline that says, hey, we need to evaluate this software against the pre-established criteria, we need to talk to all the stakeholders that are involved, right? Engage the software vendor. All the things we just talked about by a set deadline, you have a, a higher chance of success of actually running a successful pilot, right? It's very easy for things to slide, particularly if they're not kind of directly in front of our faces. And by setting a deadline and enforcing that deadline, right? Because it's of course one thing to set it and, and another thing to enforce it, we give ourselves the best chance of actually taking all the steps that we've mentioned to this point and successfully completing them, which again, encompasses running a successful software pilot. And, and finally, I just like to say it's, it's not an easy process and it's not um, something a lot of firms are familiar with. However, if you're following kind of a pre-established set of, of rules and criteria or best practices, right? Like we always do in engineering, it definitely eases a lot of the burden on those involved in the pilot, particularly those who are responsible for the outcome. So to summarize, Right. One, you're going to want to identify the, the key stakeholders in the pilot. Two, determine the criteria for success. Three, set a budget for the pilot. Four, work in tandem with the software vendor. Five, set and enforce a deadline for the pilot. And of course, like we always offer at the end of, of every AEC Tech episode, we're here to help. Um, you know, whether it be me or any of the other great folks here at EMI, we just want to help um, the AEC community succeed when it comes to implementing software and software pilot is the first step in that process. So anytime, of course, reach out and, and uh, it's been a pleasure running this episode solo and we'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming with guests here shortly. Thank you for listening. Please remember, you can find the show notes for this episode at aectechpodcast.com. There, you will find key points discussed in today's episode, as well as any links to any of the resources, books, or websites mentioned during the episode. 
Until next time, I wish you the best in all of your engineering and technology endeavors. Thank you.